There's a passage where the Buddha teaches Rahula how to take joy in the practice. He says, if you reflect on the things you've done, the things you've said, the things you've thought, you see that you didn't harm yourself, you didn't harm other people. That in and of itself is reason enough to take joy. Notice he didn't say, if you reflect and see that you did better than somebody else, take joy in that. Because how do you measure better? If you're going to measure better, look at yourself. Are there areas where you used to act in a harmful way, but now you've learned to act in a less harmful way? Are there areas in which you used to act unskillfully and now you're more skillful? If you're going to make a comparison, make that kind of comparison. Because the practice, after all, is practice in learning how to overcome suffering. Your suffering is a totally private matter, in, sense, in the sense that only you can experience your own suffering. Nobody else can look into your mind and measure how much you're suffering. And you can't look into other people's minds to see how much they're suffering. sort of a basis you might have for comparing yourself in the practice with other people is totally non-existent. Or to put it another way, it's, it can't be measured in any way at all. So if you find your mind slipping into that old issue of, are you better than other people, are you worse than other people, realize that both sides have fangs. When you feel that you're better than other people, you tend to get complacent. When you feel that you're worse than other people, you tend to get depressed. It's one of those perceptions of pro proliferation, they call them, or complication. There's contact at the senses, and from contact there arises feeling. It's an interesting passage in one of the suttas. The Buddha starts out in a totally impersonal way like this. There's contact, and from the contact comes feeling. And then what you feel, you then label. All of a sudden you've come into the picture. And what you label, you think about. And what you think about, you tend to complicate, and then the complications turn around and bite you. It's the categories of thought that tend to complicate matters in this way, or to proliferate in this way. And the big one is thinking about yourself in comparison with other people. That really has fangs, because it gets you worried about issues that really are useless. The real issues are, are you getting more skillful in learning how not to create suffering for yourself? This is not a narrow or selfish issue, after all. We hear about all the abuse that people inflict on others. It's usually because they're suffering. If they weren't suffering, they wouldn't inflict abuse. To the extent to which you can learn not to suffer, you're much less likely to harm others. That's the big issue. It has nothing to do with comparing yourself as better or worse than or equal even, not to other people. The whole comparing mindset is out of order here. But it's often related to the way we judge ourselves. If something doesn't go well in the meditation, something doesn't go well in your life, you tend to judge yourself as a bad person. 
something goes well, you tend to judge yourself as a good person. And it's the reading of the judging of yourself now that gets in the way. Again, when the Buddha was teaching Rahula, it was learning how to look at his actions, at his words, at his deeds, and to purify the actions, the words, and the deeds. It's not the issue of an issue of making himself a better person. It's learning how to respond to situations in a more skillful way. That's something you can evaluate, something you can learn from. If you make a mistake, you learn from the mistake and learn how not to repeat that mistake. If you do something well, remember that. Take joy in that and keep on training. In other words, when you look at your actions, don't make them a gauge of what, how good a person you are. Because that's the beginning of the fangs. And then it starts you thinking about, well, am I better than some, that other person over there? Do they do a better job? Are they more generous? Are they more virtuous? Are they better meditators? Am I better than they are? Either way, that kind of thinking has fangs, because it really obscures what actually happened and what actually can be done to improve your habits or improve that particular action the next time that particular situation comes around. That's what the real issue is. Everything the Buddha teaches gets analyzed down to into actions, intentions, and their results. The intention you can gauge as to whether it's skillful or not. The results you can gauge as to whether it's skillful or not. What kind of person you are, how good or bad you are, that's not anything you can gauge at all. And it really gets in the way. So your duty here is to look at your intentions, and then to see how well those intentions play out when you act on them, and learn how to judge the results. Look at things simply in terms of cause and effect, and measure the effects in terms of whether they're harmful or not, whether they lead to happiness or whether they lead to stress and suffering. It's all very simple, but we don't like things simple in that way. We like to complicate matters. And when we complicate things, that's when our thoughts turn around and attack us. So learn to keep things pared down and simple. While you're sitting here and meditating, for instance, how is this breath? And then how is this breath? How about this one? How is your focus? Where are you focused? Is it working? Is it getting results? If you like the results, stick with it. If you don't like the results, you can change. And the issue of how good a meditator you are, if that somehow pops in the mind, just let it pop out of the mind. It's really irrelevant. And it can get into the way of deeper insights. There's one passage where the Buddha mentions it. It's a sign of an untrue person who, on gaining strong concentration, uses that attainment to measure himself against other people. I've got this attainment. They don't have this attainment. I'm better than they are. I'm a better meditator. That right there blocks the insight that can come. As the Buddha says, in that particular sutta, he says the, medita the good meditator should reflect, or the true meditator should reflect. The Buddha teaches non-fashioning even with regard to states of concentration, attainments along the path. 
Non-fashioning here means that you don't fashion a sense of self around these things. You simply see them again as action and result. The meditation, the meditative state, not so much as a state, but look at what you're doing to create that state. And to what extent does it still involve stress or suffering? In what way could you create a more skillful state? Again, again this reduces everything to actions and results. And the type of person you are it just gets put aside. So when you find the mind coming around and attacking you with those thoughts with fangs, learn to remind yourself, we're not here to compete with anybody else. You don't know who else is suffering, how much they're suffering. Even when they try to make a, a science out of happiness, they ask people to measure their happiness on a scale of zero to ten. Well, happiness doesn't come with little numbers like that. It's all very subjective. It's not really a science at all. So on the one hand, you can't really measure how much someone else is suffering. And two, it's, it's really irrelevant to the issue at hand, which is how much suffering are you creating right now? And how can you learn to create less? That's the only issue that matters. So remember that point. Use it to cut through any other thoughts with fangs that come and attack you. And you find that just this simple analysis, cause and effect, action and result, that can clear away a lot of problems. keep you focused on what's really important.